Let's get back to a story we covered extensively yesterday and I thought we'd solved. I thought we'd solved the issue of um, radical... Well, actually, cannon fodder posties who all belong to a union where you don't have to compulsory belong, but they all do. And we talked to Bill Manyard, the old commie union agitator, who got them all worked up and told them not to deliver some pamphlets from a group called Better Wellington. Not particularly well laid out pamphlets or anything, but it was a mail out. And the first day they were meant to go out, they didn't deliver them because they said they were dis or misinformation. Well, Bill Manyard came on yesterday and had a good crack at trying to defend the indefensible, but even he kind of grudgingly admitted he was just doing a bit of political steering. I note that the Mayor Tory Farnhouse come out and said, good on the posties. And I also note that while New Zealand Post have told Better Wellington these things were delivered yesterday, neither Ben nor I got them in our letterbox. But it is a free speech issue. And do posties have a right to censor your mail and decide what people can deliver to you or not? One group that has uh, weighed into this are our friends at the Free Speech Union. And Nick, is that Han or Han, Nick? It's uh, Han, sure. Han. Uh, Nick Han yeah. from the Free Speech Union uh, joins us now. Um, geez, a lot of interest in this story, Nick, because it does drive, does it not, to kind of freedom of expression and freedom to communicate. Yeah, hi, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, this is a cultural battle that's going on. We can talk about whether something's legal or not. Clearly, in this case, it is legal to send out pamphlets and the posties should be just doing what they're obligated legally to do, which is to deliver the post. Um, but we're talking about a battle over, you know, hearts and minds here. And we, we've we had problems with, with professors and now we've got problems with posties, you know, trying to tell us what we can hear and what we can't hear and what we can read and what we can't read. I got so, the feeling yeah, from yeah. Mr. Manyard, the union boss yesterday, that he's driving this, not the posties. It's almost, I mean, it's political, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, who's to say, right? He said it was unanimous amongst the posties down in Wellington. That yeah, they we know how unions happened. like that work. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, but I mean, even giving him the benefit of the doubt, it's it's possible that maybe, you know, a lot of posties do feel strongly once they've obviously had the idea suggested to them that it might be problematic. And so, you know, maybe they take his lead on that or someone else's. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to speak for him. But, um, but we, we are dealing here with a cultural battle. And yeah. I think it, it really is um, pretty clear that, okay, people have a job to do. They could just go out and they could deliver the post. Um, but when they start trying to tell us what we are allowed to think and what we're allowed to read, what we're allowed to receive... Or that I mean, a I certain set of words it. have a certain power to damage. And I read... Look, I read the pamphlet. There's nothing... It might be debatable, but they're not saying go out and be mean to Muslims or we don't like Muslims. Yeah, and well, I think clearly the ire of Better Wellington is directed at the, at the mayor and the council, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's actually the point of the, the pamphlet. Now, even if that wasn't the case... It's still very, very difficult to see how you could take that statement, um, you know, just, just based literally on what it states and one little line, you know, somewhere down the pamphlet and say, well, that's suddenly, you know, Islamophobic or it's anti-Islamic. I mean, you know, we, we're not reading um, the lines here. We're reading between the lines if we have to be censoring at that nice, level. Nice, nice. Right. We're talking about inference, right? Yeah. Um, Tori Farno comes and says, good on the posties. Geez, that's a good free speech attitude from the leader of our municipality who benefit, strangely enough, from the suppression of this of this mail-out? Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, that's why I say I, I think we're dealing here with a broader cultural issue, right? We, we, we Every time we go into bat for people, um, whether it's, you know, the ratepayers of Wellington or whether it's, um, you know, people in universities who feel that they can't actually honestly share their opinions without coming under attack, we're, we're really dealing with hearts and minds. We're dealing with a, a cultural shift and... It, in the case of you know Better Wellington, it's clearly a political philosophy that's that's uh, you know the issue here, yeah. and it's not the one that's in, in favour with the council, or especially yeah. with the mayor. So, are you concerned that the mayor has made statements which are clearly anti-free speech? Might you guys take it up with Tory Farno? 
Um, I mean, yeah, it's absolutely a possibility. Um, I think, though, it's sort of playing into the whole misdirection, um, you know, uh, campaign that's going on maybe from from um, the Wellington Council or, or at least the Mayor's office. Um, and we, I don't know if we really want to get drawn into that necessarily because I guess the point of the pamphlet is that they're really concerned about rates going up again and again. And they care, you know, they're really caring about the spending or the wasteful spending that they, they believe um, is going on. So... I mean, in the end, let maybe let the pamphlet do the talking, um, and um, and and I think it's probably this is being used as a as a rallying point or a rallying cry for for a, a cultural issue, which is you know what should we be allowed to hear and what should we be allowed to share with people, um, which is guaranteed under the Bill of Rights, Section fourteen, right? It's not yeah. just you're allowed to go and say stuff, but you're allowed to receive information too. Yeah. And if we can't receive information and make our own minds up like adults then uh, someone clearly thinks they know better than us. And I mean, if it's the posties, God bless them. Um, well, I'm not sure if they're entirely qualified to make that ruling. Maybe the people of New Zealand should be making that decision for themselves. All right, I hear you. Nick, the other issue that we've been kicking around here on the platform this week is coupe beer. And I think a remarkable, remarkable ruling from the otherwise quite sensible Advertising Standards Authority that a beer which puts a legendary, mythical, maybe real Māori character. I'd say Kiwi character, actually, because I would consider Kupe part of my culture as well. It put him on a can of beer alongside Magellan and Columbus celebrating the great discoverers of the world, the great explorers of, of the world. And a couple of people complain, I think a Māori wardens organisation and a, I think, state-funded Wowser group and suddenly the beer, the Advertising Standards Authority, a voluntary semi-statutory body, can demand that there be no advertising of that beer. And in fact, I think they can, they're thinking they can demand that they stop selling it. Is that a freedom of speech issue? Well, yeah. I mean, it's obviously an intellectual property question, isn't it? Um, but but no. I think the bigger issue... Why is it an intellectual property question? That, well, what I mean to say is it's a question around intellectual property because... Yeah. Uh, we're talking about um, two very different mindsets. We're talking about um, okay, a Western view of how information or iconic images or names or you know that sort of thing might be owned or not owned. Um, and then we're talking about, um, I guess, this, a sense of a culture believing that they, or well, no, I'm not saying all Maori think this way, but they that certain people in their culture think that uh, you know Westerners have or Europeans have no no claim on any of their. I'm not um, a Westerner or European, Nick. I'm a New Zealander. No, no, I know I that. I know that's the statue of Coupe at Wellington Railway Station when I was five years that, old. It's part course, of my that's story. My point, though. That's my point. What I'm saying to you is that this is how people are being divided. We're being we're being sorted into groups according to identity, and then we're being told that you're allowed to say this because you're from this group, but you're not allowed to say that because that belongs to another group. And this is the whole problem. We're dealing with you know, not a two-tiered society, but a multi-tiered society where you've got people at different levels who are apparently, according to their their birth, their ancestry, entitled to say things that other people are not allowed to say. So you know, I think I think we find ourselves, like I said earlier, in a in a massive cultural battle. It's a battle over hearts and minds, and it's a really a big kind of worldview question. You know, mm. what world view are well, we look, going? Nick, to I think you put this you put this really really well. I got another question for you. Let's explore this idea a little further. <laughs> um, do you think our media, as we are the media, the mainstream media that holds the mirror up to New Zealand society, or should? Do you think it's taken sides on this issue? 